Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, June 19. Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna has asked the Attorney General and the Office of the Children's Advocate for legal advice on the implementation of an unauthorized sexual education program in six privately run children's homes. In letters to both parties, the Youth Minister wanted to know what legal recourse was available to the Ministry and the Child Development Agency CDA. Reports surfaced this week that a sex education program implemented in the children's homes by human rights group Jamaicans for Justice was done without the knowledge of the CDA. The manual used to administer the program was considered inappropriate for the children and that would have breached the operating guidelines for the children's homes. Minister Hanna has since demanded a report from the CDA as to why the program was conducted for eight or nine months without its knowledge. The minister has also directed the CDA to immediately sharpen its monitoring function to prevent a recurrence. The Education Ministry is reminding parents and schools that transfers for GSAT students must be approved by the Education Minister. The reminder comes as students today learned how they performed in the 2014 test and the schools to which they have been assigned by the Education Ministry. The practice where some schools decanted into other uh, already oversupplied schools is not going to continue and we will therefore uh, ask for transfers to be approved here, not to stanch anybody's preference or ambition, but to make sure that we do not have the imbalance that presently exists where some schools are vastly overcrowded while others have available space. The ministry assures that it's devoting finance and staff to help struggling schools upgrade their facilities and offerings to students. Meanwhile, the Education Ministry will be readjusting its budget to provide even more support to aid students in mathematics and literacy. In this year's GSAT, the average language arts scores remained the same as last year, while math grades actually slipped by 1%. The Ministry of Education is readjusting its budget internally to afford significantly increased uh, capacity both in literacy assistance and mathematics coaching in the primary schools and we are uh, devoting these to the partic particularly to the weaker schools government is to introduce vehicle emission standards and legislation in an effort to improve jamaica's air quality state minister for water land environment and climate change ian hills made the announcement during his sectoral presentation tuesday NEPA will be finalized in the draft motor vehicle emission standard and we expect these to be adopted into a regulatory framework this year. The implementation of this regulatory framework will allow the country to realize the testing of motor vehicle emission and regulate fleet emission. The ministry will also be partnering with the United Nations Environment Programme and the University of Technology in implementing a global fuel efficiency initiative. This will look at issues relating to clean fuel and vehicle efficiency. Mr. Hill says discussions are also underway with Jamaica's international partners to procure a mobile air quality laboratory. This will increase the country's emergency response to air pollution incidents and allow for prompt dissemination of information to our emergency response partners to save lives in hazardous situations. And in addition to government's existing eight air monitoring sites, others will be established in Manchester and St. Catherine during this financial year. On Monday, June 23, several changes to the processing of work permits for foreign nationals will take effect. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security says the restructuring is to protect the Jamaican labour force from a saturation of skills that are already available locally. Director of the Work Permit Unit in the Ministry, Lisa Ann Grant, says the flat rate of $180,000 across all sectors will be removed to introduce several categories of employment under which respective fees are to be paid. This will be based on the level of demand for the individual skill sets. Going forward, wholesale and retail trade and motor vehicle repair sectors, among others, will pay a fee of $170,000 annually. Hotel restaurant services and construction work permits will attract a $150,000 fee. For foreigners looking to work in the finance, transport, storage and communication sectors, they will pay up to $130,000 while manufacturing, agriculture, health and education work permits will carry a maximum fee of $110,000. The application or processing fee will also move from $14,400 to $15,000. The focus really is not an in increase in fees. 
it's more a restructuring of how we apply fees. And it was driven by the thrust of protection on one hand and attraction on the other. It was a policy decision that was taken with a vision to see an improvement in the local labor force. The last revision of foreign nationals' work permit fees was done in 2008. And finally, Science, Technology, Energy and Mining Minister Philip Paulwell is on his way to the European continent where he's scheduled to attend critical meetings to boost Jamaica's telecoms profile. Between June 19 and 20, Minister Paulwell will be in London attending the Commonwealth Domain Name Systems. From June 22 to 26, the minister will contribute to the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers ICANN 50 meeting. On June 26, he heads to Geneva for the Ministerial Forum for the second working session of the Smart Sustainable Development Model SSDM Advisory Board. All the meetings will seek to strengthen key areas of the island's Internet Services Network, including increased access, management cybersecurity, and the use of ICT for disaster management. Minister Paul will return to the island on June 29. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching.